In this video, we're going to talk through how to approach EDUCAS English Language Component 2, Question 4. As we've done before, we're going to look at extracts from some student responses to a set question. So remember, you can pause the video at any point to take notes or give yourself more time to read through what's on screen. So, what's our evaluation question for this particular paper? It's based on Source B, a passage from P.T. Barnum's autobiography. The statement you're given is, P.T. Barnum is clearly excited at the prospect of adding Tom Thumb to his collection of freaks. You're then asked, how far do you agree with this statement? So, for this question, you need to find points within the text that demonstrate Barnum's excitement to add Tom Thumb to his group of circus freaks. In doing so, you should look at what he says and the language he uses to express his excitement. Remember, for a 10-mark question, you should be aiming to make roughly 8 or 9 points with evidence from the text for each one. We're just looking at extracts from each student's response here, so we'll only award marks for what you can see. Let's start with student A. Press pause now to give yourself time to read through this extract carefully, and press play again when you're ready. So currently, this student is working at a high band one or low band two. This means they'd receive two or three marks out of a potential 10. Let's look at why. Immediately, they directly answer the question in their opening sentence. I agree that P.T. Barnum is clearly excited at the prospect of adding Tom Thumb to his collection of freaks. The first two points are accurate, as they select evidence and explain why their evidence proves Barnum's excitement. But it's from the third point onwards where they fail to earn themselves any more marks. For instance, they comment on the evidence, I really felt that the adventure was nothing more than an experiment. Here they repeat that Tom Thumb is an adventure. Sadly, they don't take this any further or explain anything in their own words. In their final point, they misunderstand the evidence, arguing that Barnum looks up to Thumb as a general. This isn't what the text says. Ideally, this isn't great evidence to use, as it doesn't really answer the question, which is about P.T. Barnum's excitement about the prospect of Tom Thumb joining his circus. Remember, it's important to revisit the question regularly to make sure the points you're making are focused and relevant. But if you were going to make some sort of comment on this evidence, a better idea would be to explain how Barnum portrays them to his potential audience, while maintaining focus on the question. For example, by writing, This shows he believes them to be an impressive spectacle that must be visited, demonstrating his excitement. Now we've broken down this extract from student A's response, we'll take a look at another response, student B's, and see how it differs. Press pause now to give yourself time to read through this part of student B's response, and press play again when you're ready. So, Quite clearly, we can see this student has produced a very good response, reaching the top of a band three. Remember, though, this is just part of their response. If they continued in this way and made three or four more points, they'd likely get marks in the highest band of the mark scheme. They open with an overview, addressing the first part of the question. Barnum is clearly excited at the prospect of adding Tom Thumb. They also address the second half of the question, how far do you agree, by explaining why they agree with the statement. The explanation here doesn't take anything away from later in the response. It's simply an overview of the main reason they agree. They take a step back and consider the most prominent idea, which is what you should do in an overview. Following this, they introduce their points with connectives, guiding the examiner through each new point. It's also structured in a chronological way, meaning the order the points appear in the text, so it's easy for the examiner to track alongside the source material. Each of the points student B puts forward supports the statement in the question, and they clearly explain why. Let's take a closer look at one of the points. Here, they've explained Barnum is excited because he's impressed. Instead of leaving the response there, they go on to explain how and why being impressed proves he's excited. Barnum recognises his potential impact on his customers. Essentially, he's going to earn a lot of money. What's also noteworthy about this response is the way this student amends the quotation. They change the pronoun I to he, so that the quotation is clear and coherent. There's no confusion about who he is, but there would be if they left it as I, as it appears in the text. The quotation is also well embedded within their sentence, instead of introducing it in a more clunky way, such as, this can be seen when the writer says. This student has made a range of points that focus on what Barnum says and the language he uses to express his excitement. Hopefully you can see the difference between these two responses. It's always a good idea to get some practice in before the exam, so why not have a go completing student B's response yourself? Good luck.